Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is Friday the 14th, at least it's not the 13th of April. And today, Nathan came over all day. Yes, we had a blast. I sure love that boy. And I want to show you something after I show you this first. We're about to hit that 6,000 subscriber mark. And yesterday morning I was checking my stats and we are at 2,008,572 views. Now that's not a lot for most big channels out there, but it is a huge amount for me because I never thought I would ever achieve that sort of a notoriety, if you want to call it that. But we'll put this aside and I want to show you a few prints that I did last night. Let me bring these over here a minute. But first I want to show you, this is a shot I took of Nathan at the inn that we stayed at in Connecticut during that wedding for my nephew and it was a very nice place and he was all excited to be part of the wedding the night before he did the rehearsal dinner where he practiced his duties as the ring bearer and he was very excited he fell in love with the bride he was absolutely enchanted with her so let me put this aside by the way I never print borderless, but I thought I would do a borderless 13 by 19 on Canon Pro Luster. On the Pro 10 this time, I want to give that little printer a chance. That's the baby sister of the Pro 1, and it uses the same ink set except for the grays. Instead of having three shades of grays, it has two shades of gray. And really, there's not that much difference in the rendition from either printer. I prefer to use the Pro 1 a lot more because larger cartridges, that extra shade of gray really adds a lot when it comes to tonalities. But um, it is able to produce wonderful photos as well. You just have to deal with slightly more often card changes. All right, so here are the batches that I did. And I did them mostly on the, let me move my tablet out of, it, out of the way. I did them mostly on the Pro 10 Again, just to show you that all you Pro 10 users, you know, don't feel bad. I'm always showing all this Pro 1 work. Well, the Pro 10 is uh, quite a contender, and it does produce beautiful stuff. And here is a, another little shot of the boy. The reason he's doing that with his hands, he's wearing a Spider-Man tie. And that's Spider-Man shooting spider web at the enemy, the bad guys. Again, Pro 10. Beautiful, beautiful rendition. It's a little bit too light. I didn't even edit this yet. I just went ahead and printed it. But uh, you can see the weave on the coat. The weave on little Spider-Man there on his tie. Check out the uh, hairdo. Yeah, he was set for this. And he knew it too. All right. I downloaded a few more images from DP Review Forum from the gallery section. And this is all the credit goes to those guys that upload images there. They're all very, very good photographers. And so I just grab a few of these images and print them. This, these are all no more than maybe 1900 pixels across the long end. Check it out. This is really, really lovely. Really interesting. Totally set up shot, you know, but still extremely colorful. And it tells you exactly, I mean, this is, you know, in your face what the Pro 10 can do. And there you go. Like I said, it's just a step under the Pro 1. If I was to print both of them, it might be very difficult to see the difference between the two. But it's quite nice. You can see every pore in her skin. It's flawless skin, but, you know, you can see every little pore in her skin, every little piece of that powder paint on her face and uh, the background I I'm sure this was a computer generated type background but again whoever did this very nice job very nice job indeed and again something that's not easy for most inkjet printers to be able to render 
to that uh, bright, colorful, saturated uh, condition. I think this might be Thailand, and this is another shot again. It was a very low resolution image. I up rested in Q Image Ultimate, and at the end of this, oh, I'm going to drop a little bomb on you guys that you're going to love. All right, so just keep watching. Nice detail. The beautiful dresses are just majestic. I would love to go there just to spend a month photographing this country. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really everywhere you look, you see this type of thing, especially on special holidays and that sort of thing. See, they're drinking some water there. It must be some sort of, um, again, some sort of a show or special event. Looks like they're sitting at a, a old ruins of a temple or something. But again, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful colors, beautiful results. Pro 10 kicks butt, I tell you. And you can get them usually used or brand new even for about $400, $500, depending who has them. I, I got that one uh, that I use uh, for about $375 new in box on eBay from a user. Check it out. This is lovely. This is really beautiful. And again, for those of you who ask, well, how many times do I have to print a photo to get exactly the way it looks in the monitor? One time, if you have everything calibrated, this I can take this back to my monitor, load that image up, and it looks exactly like it. Again, remember, all of the areas in the shadows are going to have more dynamic range on the screen than on the print. All right? But if I light this properly, I will be able to see the detail that exists right here in these areas. And again, beautiful. Difficult to get. This color is a difficult one to get. Some of the deeper, not this, this is not that bad, but some of the deeper blues that tend to go toward violet will be difficult for a printer to render and be able to reproduce. And often they are out of gamut colors and uh, they just, the printer does the best it can. It will compress colors that are out of gamut and try to duplicate them as best it can. The Pro 1 has no problem doing this. The Pro 10 as well, no problem at all. That's not saying that the P800 or the Pro 3880 cannot do that. But again, it's just those extra colors that are in that 12 color palette on the Pro 1. Yeah, you just can't compete with that. All right, this is a little bit odd, and I'm not sure whether this man is wearing a mask of some sort, but his eyes have dots on them. And I can't figure what that is, whether this is a statue or a real man dress. But again, it is really interesting. Almost a monochromatic background, and then it looks like almost like somebody masked out the figure out of the background and then cut all the color off the uh, background. You've seen that done many times. I think the movie Sin City is the one that perpetuated that effect with the black and white girls with the bright red lipstick. All right, this is the last of the set that I just decided to show you tonight. Again, is this guy a messy painter or is this done on purpose? But still, it's very graphical, really nice, very good colors, beautiful out of focus background and render beautifully, Pro 10 on Pro Luster. All right, now, let's look at these. This is what I wanted to show you guys. And before I sh show you these, I want to show you the paper that I use. This is not even inkjet paper. This is aquarella paper from Canson. And you buy this at an art supply store. It comes in booklets, as you can see. It's got a really nice rough texture. It is sized. In other words, there's a coating on it, but it's only for watercolor paints, not for inkjet printing. So you buy this, it might cost you about $20, $30, maybe, depends 
I don't think I pay that much for it. This particular one is uh, 12 by 18, and it is a 300 gram, 140 pound type paper. Very, very stiff. Difficult to print on because of that stiffness. And I want to first show you the color rendition on the Epson R2880. And I decided to use that printer because I needed to use a good matte black ink on it. And remember, if you saw some of my previous videos, I was testing the cone color from Inkjet Mall Special Ultra High Definition Black Matte Ink. And so, if you use regular matte black ink, it may not be as good a rendition with the deep blacks that I was able to achieve with that particular ink. And here it is, right here. You can order that from Inkjet Mall, Ultra HD Matte Black. Here it is, I want you to look at this. Exquisitely beautiful young dancer. And this shot is beautiful. I mean, whoever did this, you get a gold medal from me. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Saturated. Look at that, how saturated that is. And how actually pastel-like the colors in the background are. But her face is in shadow. And so it's lit beautifully. And you can just see every single hair. And this is a texture paper. I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture on this. So you print it on a preferably an Epson printer with the special ink. Another ink that's good is the OCP K3 type Epson matte black. Very, very dense. And this is gorgeous. I then finish it. Once it is printed, I finish it with a coat of UV type protecting type spray. And not that I need to, but basically what it does is it actually increases the appearance of the black areas. So it does increase contrast a little bit and the saturation actually increases a little bit as well. Again, look at how stiff this paper is. It is gorgeous. It's got a beautiful, beautiful surface. So give that a try. If you can find the Canson watercolor regular inkjet coated paper, use it. Basically it has the same texture and it is just gorgeous. Instead of paying $7 a sheet, I'm paying something like 50 cents a sheet doing it in this fashion. Now the effects are not photographic as people might say. It's more of a pictorial, more of a, uh, a suggestion of imagery. Now I went to the Pro 1 and I said, well, let, let me try the Pro 1 using the fine art setting so that I can kick in the or trigger the use of matte black. Remember, Canon Pro printers need to go onto the fine art setting in order for the matte black to be triggered. Otherwise, you'll be printing with photo black even when you choose matte paper. So I went over to the fine art choice. I picked a matte paper. I used its profile and I printed this. Again, it is ghostly. It is just so beautiful. I render the photograph into black and white mode using silver effects. And then I actually toned it a little bit. I wanted to give it that old timey look that we used to do in the dark and where we would actually subject our prints to different types of chemicals to give it a tone away from that neutral cold black. So this has a warmish, yellowish kind of tone, not sepia, not brown, but toward the yellowish uh, realm. And I think it's just gorgeous. It's a blurry, no it's not. I can see every hair on her head and every detail of her eyes, but everything is just so beautifully subtle. It's just a winner. So the Pro One kicks butt with this combination. Now the problem of course is the white, leading edge and trailing edge border that you must accept. So in this case, I decided to print it on a uh, one of those larger sheets and then I trimmed it down 
to this size. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this prints. This was specially for one of my viewers and customer for the Pro One cartridges, Christine Bilby Photography. She is a wonderful photographer, specializes in women, and does an incredible job. And I am not kidding. Look it up on Facebook, Christine Bilby, B-I-L-B-Y, Photography. Check out her work. All right, let's talk about the little bombshell that Q Image has dropped. I got contacted by Mike from Q Image, and he offered me a free plugin. The first time there's a plugin for Q Image, you will be able to print into Q Image after you edit in Photoshop or Lightroom or Photoshop Elements 10. All you have to do is click in Photoshop is File Automate and then print in Q Image and it immediately exports that image that you spent a lot of time editing in Photoshop directly to Q Image. So you can take advantage of Q Image's amazing printing technology. Okay, the algorithms for sharpening, the upresing algorithm is superior to anything I've ever used. Same thing goes to Lightroom. You can export out your Lightroom image to Q image. Basically what it does, it just exports it to a special folder and then Q image will see it. And then you just go ahead and print. You can apply your, your output sharpening there, which is superior to any other I've ever used. And so that is a wonderful thing. And I'm going to do a video demonstrating that process in both Photoshop as well as Lightroom. So that should prove really interesting. Remember, QImage sells for about $70. It is an amazing program. It is a pain in the butt to use because of the interface. And people that are used to regular menu type structure will be going crazy with QImage because it is a totally original type of user interface and one that does not match anything you may have ever used. So it is a little bit difficult to learn, but once you learn it, you're going to fall in love with it. You're going to fall in love with it. And if you go away often and you leave your printer unattended, you can print automatic, um, not sort of like purge sheets that are custom made for each printer you may have and the type of ink set that it uses. So it creates a purge sheet of a particular set of colors and then you schedule it to print. You just load some copy paper on your printer, leave everything on, your computer on, Q image on, go away. Come back a week later and every day you have printed a purge sheet. When you come back, your printer's gonna be happy waiting to see you and ready to print without having to run you know, nozzle checks or, or cleaning cycles because you left your printer unattended for two weeks or even a month. All right, so that is just one of the many, 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 many features that QImage offers. And I sound like I'm a proponent of it. Well, I kind of am because I love it so much and I use it. I'm a customer and I have created videos for QImage and they repay me by providing me with a free plugin, which is only $19.95 anyway. By the way, once you pay your $70 or whatever it costs for um, Q Image Ultimate, you have free updates for that whole year. And then all you have to do is pay about $19 a year to update it again, to have it activated, in other words, so that you can continue to receive updates. If you don't want to pay the update fee for the year, then you just don't get any more updates, but you still are the owner of that particular, at that particular level, whatever the update may be at the end of the year, you get to keep that, that is yours to keep. So very nice. I think it's very good uh, little business model for them. So you don't have to constantly be rebuying the program. All right, that is it. Thank you so much. Tomorrow we're probably gonna pop some Pepsi and celebrate 6,000 subscribers. I hope so. All right, thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Click on that little bell so you get my announcement when I upload a video. And also the little box that tells you 
You have to do two things now. You have to click the bell and the little box. Consider joining Patreon.com. A lot of you have done so, and I appreciate that immensely, immensely. So that is it. Thank you once again. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.